Hi there, and welcome to this day in history for January 17th. January 17th is the 17th day of the year in the Gregorian calendar with 348 days remaining to the end of the year, unless it's a leap year, and then there's 349 days remaining to the end of the year. Today, let's take a look at a word that has entered the lexicon within the last hmm, 25 or so years, upcycling. Upcycling is new enough that my spell checker had a hard time recognizing it. A new word like this is typically in use well before it's written down or documented, but back to upcycling, it's formed by the combination of up and recycling. Upcycling, as I found it defined, is a word that refers to the conversion of a discarded object into something of higher value, although I have certainly seen upcycled items made from things that had not quite yet been discarded. <laughs> I think you get the idea, though. Pretty sure that Pinterest, YouTube, and Facebook are full of ideas and objects that are or could be upcycled. Now, before we get started, I want to mention that links to my research are included in the show notes. I ask you to go ahead and click that like button. Consider subscribing if you haven't already, and feel free to share this video with others using your email messaging or social media. And with that, we're going to start with, drum roll please, this is the birthday of Benjamin Franklin, born January 17, 1706. One of the founding fathers of our country, of the United States, I should say. He was a leading writer, printer, political philosopher, politician, Freemason, postmaster, scientist, inventor, humorist, civic activist, statesman, and diplomat. He's known for the lightning rod, bifocals, and the Franklin stove. <laughs> Remarkable man, Ben Franklin. He lived to the age of 84. This is the birthday of the youngest of the Bronte sisters, Anne Bronte, who was born January 17, 1820. While many of us dream of becoming published authors, the Bronte sisters brought it. She published a couple of novels under a pseudonym and a book of poetry with her sisters. Sadly, Anne passed away in 1849 at the young age of 29, most likely from tuberculosis. This is the birthday of Glenn L. Martin, born January 17, 1886. He's the founder of the Glenn L. Martin Company, an aircraft and aerospace manufacturing company. Later on, the Martin Company merged with American Marietta Company, forming the Martin Marietta Corporation. And later yet, Martin Marietta merged with Lockheed to form the Lockheed Martin Corporation. Mr. Martin lived to the age of 69. Americans overthrew the Hawaiian monarchy on January 17, 1893 in order to establish a new provincial government. On January 17, 1899, the United States took possession of Wake Island in the Pacific Ocean. Interesting day for birthdays. This is the birthday of American mob boss Al Capone, born January 17, 1899. He started out as a bodyguard and ended up in charge of a bootlegging operation out of Chicago. Capone began to make a name for himself and seemed to relish publicity. He made donations to charities and was viewed by many as a sort of a modern-day Robin Hood until the St. Valentine's Day Massacre. Apparently, he was crafty enough to not get pinned for many of the violent crimes, but they were able to get him for tax evasion. He went to prison for that. Al Capone died in 1947 at the age of 48. On January 17, 1916, a group of golfers got together in a meeting that would lead to the founding of the Professional Golfers Association. On January 17, 1917, the United States paid Denmark $25 million for the Virgin Islands. Alcohol prohibition began in the United States on January 17, 1920, as the Volstead Act went into effect. This is the birthday of American actress and singer Eartha Kitt, born January 17, 1927. She had a velvet voice and a sultry quality. I've placed a link in the show notes if you'd like to check her out. I think the sample that I selected for you is from when she was quite a bit younger than when I first heard of her. Sadly, she is no longer with us. She died in 2008 at the age of 81. 
On January 17, 1929, a cartoon character called Popeye the Sailor Man first appeared in the Thimble Theater comic strip. Two items from January 17, 1945 that I believe are related. First of all, the Russians liberated Warsaw, Poland from the Germans and took it instead for the USSR. And I'm pretty sure related to that somehow on January 17, 1945, Swedish diplomat Raoul Wallenberg was taken into Soviet custody while in Hungary, and he was never seen publicly again. The UN Security Council had its first session on January 17, 1948. On January 17, 1950, 11 men stole more than $2 million, which would be worth $29 million in today's money, from the Brinks Armored Car Depot in Boston, Massachusetts. Now, being the sort of folks who would commit such a bold robbery, these guys couldn't stay out of trouble, and they also began to have differences with each other, and their big secret began to unravel. Even so, they almost got away with it, but five days short of the statute of limitations expiring, the FBI swooped in and arrested most of the crew that weren't already in jail or prison or in the hospital or dead, and the last two a few months later. The weak link was one of the crew, James Spex O'Keefe, who got arrested and incarcerated for another burglary and left his share with one of the other burglars. While O'Keefe was in jail, he wrote letters to the others demanding his share and hinting that he might talk. They sent a hitman to take him out, but the hitman got caught before completing his task. Oh boy, then O'Keefe did talk for sure. Most of the gang was caught, but not much of the money was retrieved. A movie called The Brinks Job was made about the robbery starring Peter Falk. On January 17, 1953, a prototype of the Chevrolet Corvette was debuted at General Motors Motorama Auto Show at the Waldorf Astoria Hotel in New York City. On January 17, 1961, President Dwight D. Eisenhower made a televised farewell address to the American people wherein he warned the nation about the increasing power of the military-industrial complex as well as massive spending, especially deficit spending. I placed a link to that speech if you'd like to see it. Well, I didn't know about this until I did today's research. For decades during the Cold War, U.S. bombers carrying nuclear weapons constantly circle the Earth in order to maintain a first strike capability should international relations go south. And so it is that on January 17, 1966, just such a plane, a B-52 bomber, collided with a KC-135 jet tanker over Spain's Mediterranean coast and dropped three 70-ton hydrogen bombs near the town of Palomares and one in the sea. It was trying to refuel in the air. If you'd like more information about this story, I've placed a link called H-Bomb Lost in Spain in the show notes. Also on January 17, 1966, NBC gave the go-ahead for a TV show called The Monkees. Capital punishment, also known as the death sentence, had been banned in 1972. It was then reinstated in 1976, as long as the individual states created specific guidelines for imposing the death sentence. And so it is that on January 17, 1977, a man named Gary Gilmore, who had been convicted of a double murder, was the first person to be executed in the United States since the death penalty had been reinstated. On January 17, 1994, former Arkansas State Clerk Paula Jones filed a suit against Bill Clinton accusing him of sexual harassment, and then when she went public, of defaming her. She was asking for damages in the amount of $700,000 or so, plus or minus. He might just should have let it be and paid the thing because it was in the investigation of this matter that several other unsavory matters were discovered. January 17, 1994 is the day that the Northridge earthquake hit Los Angeles. A 6.7 magnitude earthquake hit at 4.31 in the morning, and it was particularly damaging to a densely populated area of Los Angeles, collapsing buildings and killing 54 people. 
The first divorce in all of Ireland's history was granted on January 17, 1997. And that's all I have for you today. As always, links to my research are included in the show notes. Thank you so much for watching. Give it a like if you enjoyed this video. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. And feel free to share this if you found it interesting or informative. Check out my other channel, 8 Susquehanna. There's a link in the show notes. <laughs> Thanks again, and I'll see you next time. Maybe just a little bit slower. No, it's not. Okay, hold on. We'll just do that again. Okay, do that again. On January 17th, 1915. No, not, not, not 1915, 1950. Do that again. That's not a nice way to say it. <laughs>